Hello and welcome to another session of Daily News Simplified. Here we have taken up important news and article from the Hindu Indian Express and Business Line newspaper and curated uh, have curated them as per the demand of UPSC examination. So we have taken up the five top uh, which are listed here five topics. The first is the antimicrobial resistance. Now this news article is related to a recent initiative by Kerala government and uh, antimicrobial resistance as you know is a problem associated with health sector in India and across the world as WHO also recognizes it as a global problem. So it is also important from the perspective of science and tech as well as the social justice issue. So. The second article that we have taken up is based on the Forest Conservation Act of 1980. Now, government has come, uh, came up with an uh, amendment to this act and it has given certain arguments in favor of bringing this amendment. But recently, Supreme Court has uh, come out after uh, these amendments were challenged in the court. Uh, Supreme Court has came out with some uh, restraint. Uh, restriction on these amendments so we have taken up this news article because it is important from the perspective of environment uh, le particularly legislations which are related to the environment sector third we have taken up a news article which is based on the ongoing uh, hearing in international court of justice and uh, it is related to a question about the israel and gaza conflict it is not same as the recent ongoing conflict between Hamas and Israel. Uh, this is something different. But uh, what is interesting in this article is the position of India and how things are getting complex and complicated for India. So we have taken this one and uh, next we have taken up an article based on sugarcane industry. This article talks about the trends in the sugarcane production and associated issues. So, important from the perspective of economy, GS paper 3. Uh, fifth and the last topic of today's discussion is based on the topic tuberculosis because again uh, data came out uh, which sheds a highlight upon the reach of important government program. So, we have compiled the details related to uh, tuberculosis altogether. So, without further delay, Let's begin our discussion with the first news article of today's session that is Kerala takes a pioneering step to curb antimicrobial resistance. Now this news featured on page number 10 of the Hindu newspaper. So what is this step, how it is going to help and uh, why this article is important. We will uh, discuss it in the subs subsequent discussion. But before moving to discuss anything, let us understand what is antimicrobial resistance. Now, antimicrobial, the term, these are set of medicines which are used to cure infections. Uh, you might have heard about antibiotic, antiviral, antifungal medicines. These are set of medicines which are used to cure the infection caused by certain pathogens like virus, bacteria, etc. Now, this resistance, the antimicrobial resistance is a natural process because when you are giving a medicine, a medication to a patient who is suffering from uh, some kind of infection, these pathogens with time, they uh, exhibit genetic evolution or you may say genetic modification and they, became, they become resistant to these medicines and that is when the antimicrobial resistance comes in. Now, what are the uh, what are the outcome of such resistance? Why it is concerning? Because when you are going to treat some infection, and the pathogen who is responsible for such infection is the resistant to the administered medicine, the cure of infection becomes difficult to an extent that it may cause death also. If you know about the disease like sepsis, 
so it in certain cases such resistance cause death also altogether so the second important thing why it is concerning uh, we will cover by understanding what is the status uh, um, global status and what is the status of an antimicrobial resistance in india now according to who this amr that is antimicrobial resistance causes around 1.27 million death directly the death caused directly by amr further around 5 million death indirectly and out of these 1.27 million death around 12 uh, lakh death around 13 lakh death the situation is very serious in india which accounts for around 3 lakh death per annum okay further it is not just about health according to world bank it has a economic cost associated with it uh, with it and world bank estimates that by 2050 it will put the amr will put around 1 trillion dollar burden on the global economy so on health front as well as on economic front it is affecting and that is why uh, author terms it as a socio economic problem now having seen the what it uh, what is it and uh, what is the status what government has done the government of india now government of india in 2011 came up with the h1 regulations through these regulation what uh, government of india did it banned completely banned the over the counter that is otc sale of antibiotic without prescription antibiotic whether it is first line antibiotic second line antibiotic third line antibiotic it prohibited sale of all kind of antibiotic without prescription but due to heterogeneity in the health care sectors landscape in india and practical problems like uh, reach of doctors reach of health care centers the medical fraternity sat together to bring a modification in this blanket uh, ban over the sale of antibiotic and then in 2013 came chennai declaration now via this chennai declaration the first line antibiotic were exempted while this ban continued for the second and third line antibiotic why they uh, removed the restriction from the first line because uh, they all assessed and realized that there are some drugs which are very important for the save saving of human life and it is very difficult uh, for the far far flung areas to uh, get access to good doctors or doc even a doctor so they allowed sale of first line of antibiotic but they continued with the ban on second and third line of antibiotic without prescription now author of this article as i told you why it is important uh, because author of this article uh, that is mr abdul gafur was coordinator of this chennai declaration so let's move on to the main article that is the initiative taken up by the kerala government now name is antimicrobial resistance intervention for total health that is amrit now what kerala government has done that here you can see in 2013 there are regulation there are suggestion that uh, okay first line antibiotic is allowed second and third are not allowed now none of the state government applied these suggestion or regulation so kerala government is going to be the first government but kerala government came up with the h1 rules which were uh, given in 2011 so kerala government has put a blanket ban on any kind of uh, sale of antibiotic without the pres prescription you must have a prescription to get a, an antibiotic in kerala now according to author considering the high literacy rate and a good doctor to patient ratio because 
for uh, for getting a prescription you first the prerequisite is to have access to a doctor now kerala has a good uh, doctor to patient ratio so patient will be able would be able to get the prescription easily secondly the literacy the high literacy rate prevalent there will help uh, to spread awareness among the population regarding the ill effects of uh, antibiotic uh, use or overuse of antibiotic however author also highlights that such restriction are not going to give any immediate result rather it may take de decades to realize what is the real impact of such initiative further author also says that such ban is just a part of the entire problem uh, in order to address the problem in a holistic manner there are certain other challenges which must be taken care of now what are those challenges he first highlights the instances of irrational prescriptions now having doctors is fine but studies have shown that 50 to 70 percent of the total prescription of antibiotic 50 to 70 percent are irrational and unnecessary so author says that first thing that we have we should or the kerala government should uh, you can take it as a generalistic suggestion for entire country uh, author is talking particularly about kerala but these suggestions are uh, well to do with entire country if any other state or you may say a pan india scheme comes in future so 50 to 70 percent prescriptions are unnecessary and irrational so he says that first thing that one should uh, take care of is the stopping or uh, rationalizing these prescription because until these things are not uh, taken care of people are bound to get antibiotics like they are getting it now second he says why these irrational prescriptions are there because there are lack of laboratories which can diagnose the disease or the diagnose the complication in a proper manner and due to lack of these laboratories doctor gave prescription as per their whims and fancies whatever uh, they consider right they prescribe it third due to sorry uh, second thing author highlights that a course of antibiotic which generally goes a general if you will talk in general terms it goes for uh, three to five days so general course of antibiotic is way much cheaper than a test in laboratory which aggravate uh, which gets aggravated because of the public perception because a general public perception patient's perception is that if I am or anyone is getting fever, just have a course of antibiotic and you'll be fine. So they end up having more antibiotic kind of self prescription, self medication goes on. Third, uh, lastly, a uh, one very important fact that author highlights here is hospital acquired infections. Author says that more than uh, the antimicrobial resistance, that is AMR due to direct uh, uh, you may say consumption of antibiotic is way lower than what is being spread through infection in hospital and uh, he says that the uh, kerala government has come up with a solution that it has asked the hospitals in the state to submit the data regarding hospital acquired infections now author says that this should be uh, a mandatory provision that all state governments should ask for data of hospital acquired infection because AMR through hospital acquired infection is way above than all other factors taken collectively. So for this he suggests that a multi-pronged strategy need to be adopted where uh, governance, sanitation and hygiene everything must be taken care of further as the problems are as we discussed that rationalizing the prescription is the first way out second is educating the masses about the ill effects of having more than what is required uh, in form of antibiotic is 
pretty much required the patients must understand that self medication and over and uh, taking uh, antibiotic at any time is not a prudent decision thirdly author says there are growth promotional antibiotics which are being used in poultry in agriculture sector in uh, production sector all 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 together so he says that uh, these growth promotional antibiotics should be banned completely fourthly he says he gives a case study of karnataka and maharashtra where uh, entrepreneurship and innovation is being promoted by government and uh, through this they are working on developing new vaccines new antibiotics and new diagnostic kits also so he says this model should be adopted to find a long term solution further he says by the time these uh, innovation and entrepreneurs will come out with a solution we must focus on increasing the number of labs and in his conclusion author says that just uh, bringing this scheme that is amrit scheme is not going to help in a holistic manner because he terms this problem as a socio economic problem and he asks for a multi pronged approach where doctor patient pharmaceutical companies the pharmacist who is selling the drugs everyone has to be uh, involved in the policy making and everyone should contribute its share to get rid of this problem so that is all for that news the next news is the what is the supreme court's interim order on forest act now this news featured on page number 11 now before moving on to discuss what uh, supreme court has said about this act what are the uh, what it has uh, what provisions it is struck down everything related to verdict let us first understand what is the background then you will have a clear understanding what supreme court has said okay so when india got independence the notification of forest the forest area was generally uh, was governed by solely this act that is indian forest act of 1927 now problem with this act was that power for notifying and denotifying both lied with the state governments so what what was the fi finding uh, finding uh, due to this act that from 1951 to the year 1975 government realized that around uh, 4 million hectare that is 40 lakh hectare of forest land was converted for non forest uses with a pace of uh, average around 2 lakh hectare per year now government was alarmed and government clearly understood that with this pace soon we will be devoid of any kind of forest because in a uh, matter of just uh, 20 25 years we lost 4 million of the forest and uh, it was converted uh, for non forest use so to mitigate this and to curb this uh, rate of deforestation government of india came up with the forest conservation act of 1980 it had two provisions basically a and b the land that has been declared or notified as forest in accordance with the provisions of indian forest act 1927 as the situation was earlier the land that is not covered covered under clause a that is under forest act 1927 but has been recorded in government record as forest as of 1980 so the revenue land uh, which has been recorded as uh, forest in state government's record as well as the notified area under forest act of 1927 but what was remarkable that the 
पावर ऑफ डी नोटिफाइंग स्टेट गवर्नमेंट वर स्टिल गिविन द पावर टू नोटिफाई अ फॉरेस्ट एरिया बट पावर ऑफ डी नोटिफाइंग वॉज टेकन अवे एंड कंकरेंस ऑफ द परमिशन ऑफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट वॉज मेड मैंडेटरी सो वॉट चेंज इट प्रोवाइड दैट द डी रिजर्वेशन ऑफ रिजर्व फॉरेस्ट यूज फॉर यूज ऑफ फॉरेस्ट लैंड फॉर नॉन फॉरेस्ट पर्पज assigning forest land by way of lease or otherwise to private entity and clearing of naturally grown trees for the purpose of reforestation requires prior permission of the central government and it resulted uh, as per the government data what we learned that uh, rate of conversion was around 2 lakh hectare per year it fell 10 times to around 22000 hectare per year so it proved to be effective but still the problem lies in that nowhere the forest act of 27 or the conservation act of 1980 nowhere defines what constitutes the forest what is the definition of forest and that is why the conflict continued and exploitation continued and one such incidence was in tamil nadu uh, a place known as godalur which gave uh, rise to the case of goda varman of 19 uh, 1996 now here what uh, supreme court said that it doesn't matter whether a land is notified as the forest or not it doesn't matter who owns the property supreme court say, said that if it is a forest by dictionary meaning now what is dictionary meaning simple meaning that if something looks like a forest consider it as a forest don't go into technicalities so whether it is a notified area under these acts or who owns it it doesn't matter if it satisfies the dictionary meaning that is forest the basic meaning the uh, the government should protect it and here came the genesis of a term that is deemed forest deemed forest that is not notified but is similar to a forest now come come back to the news supreme court has upheld this very verdict and kind of uh, put an stay on the government's amendment of forest conservation act of uh, 1980 supreme court has said that government should follow all encompassing dictionary meaning as upheld in this goda varman case of 1996 further we will uh, discuss but first thing what, why government of india came up with this uh, amendment see we discuss that nowhere what constitute forest is defined now it creates a confusion now government stand is that due to this ambiguity that what constitute forest every state has a different definition like if you will uh, look for goa it it has a criteria of uh, around 75% area covered by forest uh, or you may say the forest species species they will declare it as a forest but this criteria is different in madhya pradesh and chatisgarh where they say if a 10 hectare of tract is having the uh, forest species and uh, forest fuel and other things related to uh, for like timber and uh, <clears throat> density of around 200 uh, trees per hectare or more so they will declare it forest most of the states even uh, don't even have the proper definition of forest what constitute a forest so state government says that these ambiguities create problem of litigation when they go to acquire any land for developmental project 
सेकेंड इश्यू इज गवर्नमेंट से इज दैट सिंस देर इज नो क्लैरिटी इंडिविजुअल रिफ्रेन फ्रॉम ऑप्टिंग प्लांटेशन वर्क दे से दैट इट इज नॉट सर्टन वेन दे विल बी वेन दे विल बी अक्यूज ऑफ infringing upon the conservation act of 1980 because there is no clear cut definition so if i will go for a plantation cultivation uh, some day government may come and when i'll be felling the trees government may come and say that uh, you are abridging the laws or the provisions of the conservation act of 1980 so it is refraining people from taking up that job <clears throat> and it is creating litigation for government in uh, acquiring the land so government came up with certain amendments and it gave some exemption basically for developmental and strategically important uh, projects here is a glimpse of these things uh, you can read this in pdf they have given uh, exemption like along rail uh, rail line public road and uh, 100 km along international border on line of control line of actual control uh, construction of strategic linear projects as we discussed further they talk about uh, security related infrastructure and uh, construction and use or uh, conversion in uh, non forest use in left wing extremist areas all these exemptions were provided but people contested these these argument they said that if the motive uh, because one of the motive that government highlighted was to give developmental work and livelihood uh, sources for the backward areas now government says that tribals and backward area and all these issues are already covered in forest right act of 2006 so they say that uh, these uh, arguments of government are not appropriate and it is mere a way to circumvent the law altogether and to convert the forest for non forest uses so in light of this background what supreme court said first one we discussed that it said that government to continue following the all encompassing dictionary meaning of forest as upheld in 1996 supreme court decision in godavarman case till a final verdict is handed out secondly supreme court said that government sh should make public and it uh, it has directed government to do it by april what the consolidated record of land deemed as forest which was prop propounded in this judgment by states and union territories so government has been tasked to make a record public of all the uh, deemed to be forest record of a state and union territories further there was another pro proposal to proposal to develop zoos and safari parks in forest land which was struck down by the supreme court so this is all for this news article let us move on to the next one that is the global south stand on israel's war in gaza now this news article featured on page number 11 of the hindu newspaper now uh one important thing that uh, you should understand is uh, that this hearing is not related to ongoing israel hamas conflict but the shadow of israel hamas conflict is clear is clearly uh, visible in this hearing also because world is uh, clearly divided on those fault lines western countries led by us european union and united kingdom are siding with israel and in this hearing also they are quoting the recent attacks while uh, other countries are uh, kind of critical about the mainly the arab world is critical about the israel's step and now global south uh, and surprisingly the brazil and south africa came out uh, as a 
heavy uh, critic of uh, strong critic of israel's action in gaza so what it is about that uh, there are two question first let us see that this issue is general assembly's request for an advisory opinion which it gave in 2022 so no, this is not a recent uh, this is not about recent issue what are the question in front of icj first is what are the legal consequences for Israel over its policy of occupations, settlement and annexation? Now, these are the questions put up by the United Nations General Assembly in the ICJ. And uh, countries have been invited to put forth their argument. Uh, annexation of Palestinian territories since 1967 war and attempt to change the demographic status of Jerusalem. Second question is, what are the legal consequences arise for all other states and United Nation itself over Israel's discriminatory policies towards Palestinians? Now, as expected, as I told that uh, the conflict of Israel-Hamas conflict has a clear-cut uh, shadow over uh, this hearing also. So, many countries uh, like uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh and other countries uh, spoke against Israel's action and they are very critical of it. Surprise element was Ireland because it contrary to the belief that it will fall in line with the western version and uh, the version of uh, European Union, Ireland has accused uh, Israel of crossing the lines. Ireland says that international law justifies the self-defense, but it should be under limit as well as it should be proportionate. So what Ireland is saying that since those uh, terrorist attack uh, on the land of Israel has killed around 1100 people, which it condemns, but in retaliation till now around 30,000 people have been killed. So, it is neither in limit nor in proportion. So, Ireland condemned this attack. Another surprising uh, turn of event come from Brazil. Now, Brazil and Israel had a close relationship, uh, uh, relationship very uh, recently, till very recently. But recently what happened that uh, things have uh, become so bad that Israel has uh, declared the Brazilian president as persona non grata. That means an unwanted person. So now the Brazilian premier cannot enter Israel. And why? Because Brazilian premier, uh, that is Lula de Silva, has openly criticized Zionism and has termed the Israeli action in Gaza as equivalent to the Holocaust of the World War II. Now, this has irked Israel and in return, they have termed him as persona non grata. Now comes India. That what is, you know, what is the standpoint of India? Now, India has a peculiar situation here. India share close bond with Israel as well as Arab countries. So, going uh, by the precedence or whatever India has been doing with the, in, you may say, uh, in line with the, its relation with Israel, because they have defense ties, uh, they have surveillance uh, cooperation uh, from equipment to the intelligence. Further, recently, uh, Adani and Elbit group manufactured uh, some drones which were shipped to Israel and which Israel is using in its Gaza operation. Further, uh, recently around 10,000 uh, people from India have been recruit recruited by various Israeli companies for job there. So, India has refrained from uh, or uh, you may say has kept it a bare minimum about uh, topics related to Israel-Hamas or Israel-Gaza conflict and it has refrained from making any public comment. So, in line with that thought only India abstained from speaking in this hearing. But 
on the flip side india has a very good relation and which is growing uh, day by day with saudi arabia qatar and ua recently prime minister modi thanked uh, qatar counterpart for releasing the naval personnel who were sentenced to death now in order to maintain that relation or to order to maintain balance what india has done that it has condemned the attack of hamas on israel but india has not designated hamas as a terrorist outfit so india is creating a balancing act and in un also you can see that it has abstained from vote on ceasefire but whenever un came up with a resolution which is critical of israeli occupation india has voted it uh, voted in favor the problem is uh, apart from making this balance between arab world and israel the main problem lies in that india uh, uh, you may say seeks or india wants to become a leader of global south this is india's aspiration but here south africa and brazil are coming out as a leader of global south and every other uh, um, country related to global south are following uh, in the criticism of israel while india seems as an outlier here so this is the main challenge that you want you aspire to be leader of global south according to author but here in this particular case the position of brazil and south africa looks way more prominent and clear than the position of india so that was all for this news article let us move on to the next Uh, news article which featured on the sorry it has been written incorrectly it featured on the business line newspaper page number 2 okay so this news article sugar not sweet in short term we will look into it is mainly a data uh, uh, which is related to the sugar cane industry and associated issues so first uh, understand what is the significance of sugar industry now first thing first uh, sugar industry is uh, you may say uh, it is spans from cultivation of cane to manufacturing of sugar and then there are multiple uses, uses of the by products of sugar cane so the uh, sugar cane producing areas act as an employment hub and you can uh, clearly see this in the sugar cane producing producing area of the uttar pradesh maharashtra karnatak and tamil nadu so first that these these industries are labor intensive they create employment and uh, it is clearly evident that these producing area act as or uh, um, become the employment hub okay so the next significance is how this sugar cane industry act as a conduit of economic growth so it acts as a raw material for various industries directly like uh, sugar a uh, direct raw material the by products are used in the generation of electricity molasses if you know a by product uh, comes when uh, sugar is refined the molasses is used in alcohol industry ethanol industry as well as used as a livestock feeding and recently government has also started extraction of potassium from molasses okay so thirdly the bagasse what is bagasse the pulp uh, which uh, remains after the extraction of juice from uh, sugar cane it has its own value it it acts as a fuel it acts as a very important ingredient of uh, providing pulp in paper industry so these are the significance of sugar industry 
let us discuss what is uh, the what are the key findings of this article first thing is the production trend which are uh, till last year were very encouraging but concerns are there article highlights that in the year 2021 and 22 india produced around 39 million ton of sugar now it was a record produce and uh, it crossed the number one uh, producer of sugar in world that is brazil it produced 32 million ton now with brazil producing less and india producing more and coupled with uh, strong demand global demand india was able to uh, achieve the record number in export also it exported around 10 million ton of uh, sugar that particular year which was more than 50% jump since the last year but situation changed in the next year that is 22 23 because of the poor rainfall in the country but it was not that bad still india managed to achieve 37 million ton of the production but this year uh, it is expected to fall further because of poor rainfall in maharashtra and karnataka but uh, data suggest that it can be compensated by the record production in uttar pradesh so these are the production trends now in this peak year of 21 22 india also diverted 3.6 million ton of the by products in ethanol uh production sect sector now problem came in in the uh, came in year 2023 when government uh, banned the diversion of sugar to ethanol production because uh, considering availability for domestic consumption now government removed this blanket ban partially but still a capping is there that is only 1.7 million ton uh, can be diverted to ethanol production so this capping is there definitely it is going to impact the producers how because alcohol sector the uh, distillery sector the ethanol sector they provide more margin than what sugar industry provides and see here diversion in 2021 22 was around 3.6 million ton which is capped at 1.7 million ton so just half so if you are having that uh, limit of diversion definitely you are going to impact the income and profitability of those who are associated with this industry so this is this is the concern that has been highlighted by this report so for moving further Uh, this report gives a balanced outlook of future where it says that importance of it uh, where it uh, sheds light and emphasize on ethanol blending program not just because of the profitability but also india india's aim to cut down the imports on oil because it says that uh, it is crucial for blending and it is crucial for uh, uh, reducing the import bill of india further it uh, it says that there should be a long term viability to ensure the capacity of achieving 20% blending target by 2026 okay but on the flip side it says that short term policy changes like ban on export and all those things it, uh, it says that short term policy changes and tightening may be necessary to manage inflation so kind of a balanced conclusion that sometime some regulation is required but for a long term we must promote the ethanol blending at least okay so let's move on to the last topic of today's discussion that is uh, related to this news article which featured on page number 10 of the hindu newspaper and uh, this news article if you know about this scheme that nikshay poshan abhiyan 
निक्षय पोषण अभियान निक्षय पोषण अभियान इन दिस गवर्नमेंट वॉज टू प्रोवाइड अ फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज सपोर्ट टू एवरी टी बी पेशेंट फॉर गेटिंग न्यूट्रीशियस और न्यूट्रीशियस फूड फॉर बेटर रिकवरी Now this study says that 76% of TB patients were paid for these nutritional support, which is better from previous year. That was just uh, 66%, but still there is no universal coverage. So yes, 10% rise in the coverage. Some form of payment has been done, but mostly people uh, around 29%, uh, 24%. are still out of uh, or have not received any kind of payment yet so we will cover the basics related to tuberculosis uh, which would be primarily uh, useful for the prelims perspective so what is tuberculosis this is an airborne communicable disease caused by bacteria bacillus myco my mycobacterium tuberculosis and uh, as we said airborne uh, typically they are spread through coughing sneezing or spitting in inside the body they typically grow where there is a high amount of oxygen and blood so that is why most of the tb that is around 80% of tbs are pulmonary in nature that is they infect lungs of individual however there are other kind of tb also which uh, affect uh, other parts like brain kidney stomach mouth etc they are called extra pulmonary tb so most of them are pulmonary they affect lungs of individual body who are the high risk group those who are infected with hiv those who are facing problem of undernutrition diabetes smoking and alcohol consumption they are more likely to acquire or to uh, get affected by tuberculosis now what are the prevention and uh, treatment there is bacillus calamant gurine bcg vaccine for children but there is no effective vaccine for adults so what is important first thing is early diagnosis and uh, the most most common method is sputum smear microscopy which studies phenotype of the pathogen from uh, the sputum sample of the infected patient however this test has its own limitation what are they they are low on sensitivity and cannot detect drug resistant pathogen fine so what we uh, read in our first article that uh, anti antimicrobial resistance it it uh, also comes in tb where pathogens are drug resistant and what are the treatment first is dot strategy uh, the full form is directly observed treatment short course uh, which is who recommended strategy and it includes early diagnosis standardized short course anti tb treatment regular and uninterrupted supply of high quality anti tb drugs so commonly used antibiotics are rifampin uh, what are the challenges again the resistance the microbacterium uh, tuberculosis has developed drug resistance now the new gen drugs like bedaquiline and delaminate are recommended for multi drug resistant tb what are the uh, what is the status in india again india top the list of 20 tb high burden countries according to who out of uh, 10 million global tb incidence 2.69 million that is 27% occurred in india and they cause around uh, out of 1 1 lakh de death in india 199 are from tb okay 
so what government is doing that uh, all these schemes are covered in detail in your pdf let's come uh, let's cover them quickly so there is a national tv control program again uh, a revised national tv control program uh, which was adopted in 1997 after wt who declared tb as the global epidemic in 1993 further there is a national strategic plan for tb elimination uh, which which aims to eliminate tb from india by 2025 and the four strategic pillar are detect treat prevent and build so that's all for today's session if you have any doubt regarding today's session you can drop your message in the comment box our team will uh, reach out to you and if you like the initiative please like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you